Today's small adventure, I'm afraid, is all about technology. In fact, I'm on my way to a shopping mall right now, and if the mood is right and the stars align, I'll be walking out of that shopping mall with a brand new smartphone. I said that I'm afraid it's about technology because I imagine there are a lot of people out there that just aren't that interested in technology and my technology adventures. But it has a strong connection to this YouTube channel and to making videos because I currently edit all these videos on a smartphone. So there is a strong connection there. Plus, it's just what I'm doing today. And uh, if that is what my day consists of, I might as well take the camera along and uh, record it for posterity. Another thing is that doing something like this, buying a high value item like a smartphone or a laptop or a camera or a touring bike or a tent, these are all a very big deal for me. It doesn't happen that often. I know a lot of people might upgrade their smartphone every year or every two years to keep up with new technology. I have intended to do that. So the decision I make, whatever I buy, is something that I will have to live with for a long time. So I'm very careful about it. Plus, I'm just really interested in it. I love technology. I love the details. I love doing comparison shopping. This, <laughs> I think the world can kind of be divided into two groups of people. Those who care about these sorts of details and those who just don't. They buy a phone and the phone works and that's all they need to know. So I've always had these funny experiences in my life where I'm chatting with someone online on Facebook Messenger or something. Could be a friend or a relative back in Canada. And they say, oh yeah, my, my friend just bought a new camera and he loves it. So of course, my question is, oh, what camera is it? And I know I shouldn't even ask the question because I know I'm going to be disappointed because my friend will inevitably say, I don't know. And that to me is astonishing. Your friend just bought a new camera. Your friend is excited about it. And you tell me about your friend and how excited he is about the camera, but you never bothered to find out what camera it is. To me, that's like alien thinking. I, I don't even understand it. If someone tells me they bought a new camera or let's say a new smartphone, I'm instantly all ears and, and I'm, I'm focused like a, like a, like a great, like a, like a bloodhound <laughs> sniffing out the details. Oh, you bought a smartphone. Which brand? Which model? Uh, what size memory card did you get for it? Is it dual SIM? Does it have a hybrid SIM card tray? How big is the battery? Um, did you get a case for it? Where did you buy it? Uh, I want to know about everything about the phone. I want to know about the experience of buying the phone. I want to dive deep into that whole experience. So that's kind of where I'm coming from in terms of my own experience of going to buy this uh, new smartphone. It's a big deal for me. There are probably two basic questions to uh, answer first before we get any deeper into this uh, technology adventure. The first question is the obvious one. Uh, why get a smartphone for video editing? Why don't I get a laptop? And the answer is pretty simple. I will get a laptop eventually. I'm just uh, not in the mood to do that right now. I don't really want to spend that much money and I don't want to do it here in Mesod or perhaps not even in Thailand. I was looking into buying a laptop a while back and at that time, because of visa issues, it looked like I might be back in Canada and I thought it would be better to wait until I got home, well, got back to Canada and bought a laptop there where I could control the experience a little bit better since uh, I speak the language in Canada and I have a 
reliable mailing address and can deal with warranty issues and all these sorts of things. So I set aside the idea of getting a laptop for a while and I started editing video on my smartphones because at that time my laptop had died. I did have a laptop, a very old one, a very basic and simple one. It could barely do anything in the way of video editing, but it could do a little bit and that's what I was using. But it eventually died about four months ago maybe, five months ago, something like that. And I started playing around with editing on my smartphone. And to my surprise, my smartphone, the one that I currently own, was far more powerful than my old laptop was. It edited video far faster and I had access to better video editing programs on my phone than I could get for my laptop because my laptop was so underpowered, it couldn't run anything. So, I don't really mind doing the video editing on a phone right now. It seems to be working out you know, relatively well. But that obviously begs the second question. <laughs> if I'm currently editing video on my smartphone and it's working out relatively well, why buy another smartphone? Why not just keep using the one I have now? Well, I have an answer to that too, and that answer has layers. I, uh, I think things through. <laughs> I make things very complicated. There's always a reason for the things I do, even if it isn't always uh, readily apparent to uh, other people. The starting point is that I like to have two smartphones. This pattern happened uh, a while back, and I like having two phones for a variety of reasons. One of the key reasons was I started using multi-factor authentication for all of my online accounts. That's the system where in order to log in to your email or to anything else online, you have to know your username, you have to know your password, but then you also have to enter a six-digit code. And this code is a one-time use code that you can get through a special app that is on your phone. I love this technology too. It's, it's so interesting that your phone is synchronized with some kind of a computer system in another country in terms of time. It's very precisely synchronized and a new six digit code is being produced for you every 30 seconds or 20 seconds. So what you do is you turn on the app on your phone, click on the, the icon for whatever account you're trying to log into, and it gives you a six digit code. And then after 30 seconds, it switches to a new one. 30 seconds later, a new one. So you look at that number on your app on your phone, enter it into your online account on your laptop or wherever you're logging in, and the system checks that code against the code at the master computer, wherever that is. And if they match, then you are allowed to uh, log in. And of course, if you think that through, it offers a pretty high level of security because even if a, a thief, someone with bad intentions, has your username and password, they still can't get into your account because they also need that code and the only way to get that code is to have your phone in his possession. And that's a lot to have happen. <laughs> so it's, it's something that I've implemented on all of my accounts. And I now use a password manager as well. I instituted all of this in Indonesia when my smartphone was stolen there. I decided to get more serious about security, so I signed up for a password manager, and then I implemented multi-factor or two-step authentication or verification on all the accounts that I could, and I basically upped my game as far as security goes. But if you're paying close attention, there's kind of a problem with this because you need your phone 
in order to get this six digit code. So what happens if your phone is stolen? As happened to me. In Indonesia, when my phone was stolen, the very first thing I wanted to do was uh, go online and change all the passwords for all my accounts. But my phone was stolen. So how would I be able to get all these six digit codes through the app when my phone is gone? This seemed like a, a catch 22 and a kind of a logical puzzle for me. I was trying to figure out how this works using two-step verification or whatever you call it was supposed to make my life more secure but now it seemed like if I lost my phone I would be locked out of all my accounts as well so how do you get around that my solution was to sign up with Authy A-U-T-H-Y and Authy is one of these uh, apps that provides the codes for you on your phone. And the unique thing about Authy is that it has online backup, but you can also add it to two phones at the same time. So if one of my phones is stolen, and presumably that phone is locked and the thief can't get into it, I can just go to my second phone, look at Authy, get all my codes, and still get into my accounts as usual. And this was the only solution I could really uh, come up with. There might be another solution that I'm not aware of, but anyway, at the time, this made sense to me. And so I bought a second phone and there's a whole lot of other advantages to having two phones. I talked about this before. I'd like to use a phone for Google Maps all the time just to go walking around. So I thought it'd be nice to have one phone as my walking around phone and I would keep less sensitive information on it. So if it is stolen, it's not such a big deal. And my second phone would be my main workhorse that I keep more secure than my other phone. And anyway, I had a whole bunch of reasons for wanting two phones. And now that I'm editing video on my phone, I have a whole new world of reasons for wanting two phones. It helps a lot for video editing. The basic idea is that I'll often be editing a video on one phone, but then I also want to upload video files, like copy video files from my GoPro to the phone from whatever day's adventures I had just had. So I'm trying to do two things at once. And as powerful as these phones seem to be for video editing, things start to fall apart when you're trying to do two things like that simultaneously. Or if you've finished with a video and you are now exporting that video on your phone, it requires all of that phone's processing power. And the way my application, my program works, I can't do anything else on the phone anyway. It is processing and exporting that video and I can't move away from that screen until it's done. So I'm sort of sitting there twiddling my thumbs, waiting for it to finish, but I want to go on and do something else. So I have to turn to my second phone. So basically I've got two phones working in tandem to process and edit and upload videos. Having just one phone often leads to a bit of a bottleneck. And that at long last finally brings me to the real reason I'm walking to a shopping mall to buy a new phone. And this is the reason. <laughs> this is my Motorola Moto X Play smartphone, which I bought back in 2015, I think. And it still works, it still works fine, but it is so underpowered in every way that it's pretty much useless to me right now. The battery, doesn't hold much of a charge anymore. And it only has 16 gigabytes of internal memory. And that's not enough anymore for all the uh, applications that I need to install on the phone these days. It just, it just cannot do what I need it to do. 
My other phone is a Xiaomi Redmi 4 Prime. It is also relatively underpowered for what I ask of it, but it's still just hanging in there. It's still good enough, and I am editing all my videos on that Xiaomi, even though it really isn't uh, the best tool for the job, but it gets it done, you know? Um, pretty, uh, if I didn't have a reason to have two phones and I had no money at all to spend, I would continue using the Xiaomi and I would probably be uh, quite happy with it. But for all the reasons I laid out, I've decided that it's time to retire my beloved Motorola and uh, replace it with a more up-to-date, more powerful phone. And that phone will be my uh, primary editing tool from now on. Because the Xiaomi that I use, even though it uh, works, it's also a five inch screen. It has a, a five inch screen, which is kind of small for what I'm doing. And all these new phones are gargantuan by comparison. I think the phone I'm considering buying is a 6.7 inch screen, something like that. Going from five inches to 6.7 doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of, of the screen of a phone, that's a big, big jump. So I'm looking forward to having more, more screen uh, real estate to uh, work with. I'm on my way to the Robinson Lifestyle Center, by the way, and I went on this walk to get there down a different route that I normally follow. It was really quite interesting. I saw all kinds of shops and businesses along that street that I hadn't seen before. And there's a uh, very nice coffee shop right behind me there. If I wasn't so bloodhound focused on this smartphone, I'd probably pop in there for one of my now traditional iced drinks as I explore all the uh, cafes that Maysot has to offer. Um, so, we've kind of answered the question of why I'm buying a new smartphone, and that leaves the next uh, important question, which one am I going to buy? <laughs> and of course, me being me, with all the research I've done, I could probably talk about that for a couple of hours. If we were sitting together over coffee, I would uh, talk your ear off about all the phones and all the options uh, that are out there. But it's not really that complicated a decision for me, as it turns out, mainly because of my budget. In a way, it would probably never be a complicated decision because if I had an unlimited budget, it would be simple. I just buy the latest iPhone or the latest Samsung Galaxy 20S or whatever their flagship model is. If money was not an issue, yeah, I'd just go out and buy the best one Samsung sells and uh, wouldn't have to think about it all that much. But I do not <laughs> have that unlimited budget, far from it these days. So in terms of the budget, to be honest, I'm looking at kind of the least amount of money I can spend while still getting a phone that does the job. And that narrows my choices down enough that uh, it's kind of turning into a pretty easy decision for me. And we'll see whether it turns out to be the right one or not. But I'm pretty confident about it. I'm also not that comfortable with spending a lot of money on things, I don't know that you get that much more when you jump from mid-range of anything to high end. These mid-range phones that are available now are amazing. They all have amazing screens, incredible battery life, and a powerful processor. They have everything you could want, and they do everything you could want and jumping up to a phone that costs $1,400 US, I don't know that you really get that much more for your money. Unless you have very specific needs, I don't really see how a Samsung Galaxy S20 uh, does more than the phone I'm thinking about, the uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro. I honestly, 
can't think of a clear difference. I'm sure the Samsung flagship or the uh, OnePlus flagship or the iPhone flagship, they'd all have you know slightly better screens. You put them side to side, you'll see the difference. But I don't think it would uh, mean that much to me. And uh, in a way, I'm kind of in the situation of some guy who still owns like a Ford Model T. He's puttering around in a 100-year-old Model T. And now he's deciding to buy a new car. It doesn't matter what he buys. Jumping from a Model T to a modern car, whether it's a Toyota or a, a Mercedes or a, a Lexus or whatever the model is, it's going to transform his life completely. That's a huge jump from one to the other. And the decision about which particular car to get doesn't really matter that much. He's going to get a far, far, far better car. And with my smartphone, I'm in a similar situation. Jumping from my 2015 budget phone to any phone produced in the year 2020 it's going to be such a huge jump in quality for me that I'm going to be happy with whatever I buy. The increase in, in power and quality is going to be such that every single phone that's available right now would be a massive improvement over what I have now. So that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. The budget I was looking at is somewhere between two and $300. And uh, if you spend $300 on a phone, I could buy five of those before I reach the $1,400 price tag of some of these flagship phones. So I'm looking at the lower mid-range phones. And after a lot of research, I sort of ended up looking at uh, quite a small selection of them three, four, five options that seemed uh, appropriate for me. The other day, a friend of mine sent me a link to a video by one of those giant smartphone YouTube reviewers. Those guys are amazing. Um, there's a, a few of them that are kind of like internet rock stars now. They're so popular. And I suppose that says something about the, the modern world that a guy who all he does is review smartphones and, and laptops and other technology, has 13 million subscribers on YouTube. And when he reviews a new smartphone, his video will get three or four million views. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Like I said, they're kind of the rock stars of the internet these days. Uh, that guy I'm talking about is uh, Marquez Brownlee from the United States. He calls himself MK... MKD, MKBHD, he, he says his name at the opening of every video, you know, something like, hey, this is MKBHD, but he says it so fast, I never get the letters straight in my head, MKDBH or MKDHB, but anyway, his real name, Marquez Brownlee, it's a lot easier to remember, but my friend sent me a video from another guy called Mr. Who's the Boss. He has about 6 million subscribers following him. He's also very professional, very smooth, very good at what he does. And the video was called The Best Smartphone of 2020. And the whole video built up to him revealing his choice for the best phone available, bar none. But on the way, he had a whole bunch of other categories. So I assumed that somewhere in the video he would talk about the best affordable phone for someone like me. And since I had settled on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro, I was hoping that he would pick that phone and say all kinds of wonderful things about it. To my disappointment, he never even mentions it. He doesn't seem to say a lot about Xiaomi phones in general, so maybe uh, that explains it. But. It was interesting watching that video and it kind of helped focus my thoughts because he did have what he called the ultra, not affordable, ultra affordable category. 
And I thought, wow, we're really going to learn something here. But his idea of an ultra affordable phone still cost $500, $400 US. And as I, I don't know what world he lives in, but ultra affordable is not $500 US. Who on the planet thinks $500 phones are ultra affordable? I think Nokia just came out with a half decent phone for $99. If you have a bunch of kids and you want to buy them ultra affordable phones, that's what you're looking at, looking for. You're looking for the $99 phone, not the $500 phone. So his video didn't have a whole lot to, to tell me in terms of getting an affordable phone, but he did do a slight detour into my budget. And there he picked out the Poco X3 as the best, the best budget phone. And I kind of get it. Everybody's raving about the Poco X3, mainly because it packs really high specs at quite a low price. So you get things like a uh, very large battery, um, you get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 732G chipset. And I think that's the newest and most powerful chipset in the 700 range from Qualcomm. And that's a better chipset than on, and then on any of the competitors. So that's pretty amazing. It has dual stereo speakers, which you don't get on any other phone in that price range. And it has a 120 megahertz refresh rate. And again, for a phone in that category, that's insane. You just don't get 120 megahertz refresh rates um, on any of these budget phones. So when you add up the specs, and then when he holds the phone and uses it, and it seemed to work well and, and everything was fine, to him, that was the obvious choice for the best budget phone. For me, the Poco X3 kind of dropped out of the running, partially because I can't get it here. You can't buy it in the stores. You can buy it online, but I've heard from some people that uh, they've tried to buy it online, but it's just sold out everywhere. So you'd end up waiting a long time. And I don't want to deal with the risk of uh, ordering online. So the Poco X3 is not on my list at all. And to be honest, I came across a bunch of reviews recently that said there were a lot of problems with the Poco X3. Sure. On paper, it has 120 megahertz refresh rate, but it doesn't work. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And as people are flipping through the menus, they said the phone would stutter, would stutter and jerk like a really horrible phone. You know, even below 60 hertz, you know, megahertz refresh rate. So the 120 might be kind of a marketing feature that maybe it works in video games when you're playing gaming, doing gaming on your phone. And I, I don't do that at all, so. And I heard that the dual stereo speakers, as good as they sound, they vibrate the back of the phone. So the phone is just like, like vibrating in your hand. And if you're holding the phone for a long time, playing a game or watching a movie or even editing a video, that vibration really gets annoying. And I came across other concerns about the phone. It seems like Poco took every possible feature and spec they could, maxed it out and threw everything but the kitchen sink into that phone. But maybe, just maybe, it wasn't engineered and optimized and put together that well. So even a phone that has a less powerful processor, less sophisticated screen, less of everything, still might end up working better just because all those individual pieces are put together and engineered more efficiently. So they work better as a unit. Anyway, so no, no Poco X3 for me. The other thing about the Poco X3, by the way, and this is kind of a, a deal breaker for me, is that it is not a true dual SIM phone. It can take two SIM cards but if you have two SIM cards in it, you can't have a memory card. You have to choose one or the other. So it has what they call a hybrid uh, SIM card tray. So you can have two SIM cards, 
or one SIM card and one memory card. And I really want a phone that can do all of it. I want to have dual SIM and add a memory card for extra storage. So that one feature alone makes the uh, Poco X3 not so uh, appealing to me. And Mr. Who's the Boss, after he finished praising the Poco X3, he then said that the next best was the Realme 6, which I believe sells for about um, $230 US, so it's a very good price. But I honestly don't understand that choice at all, especially compared to the alternatives. I think he got that wrong. The Realme 6, for example, has a MediaTek Helio G90T chipset, if I'm getting that right. And I think that's an okay chipset, but most people agree that a Snapdragon 720G is better. So the Realme 6 has an inferior chipset. It has a, a very small battery compared to the others. I think it's 4,300 milliamp hours, whereas I think the Poco has 6,000 milliamp hours. So the Realme 6 has quite a small battery. It also has a Gorilla, Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and a plastic back, which again is a much lower spec than any of the competitors. The phone I'm looking at, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro, has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back. And it's a kind of in the same price range. What else uh, about the Realme 6 don't I like? I just remembered a couple of other things. Little things, but they make a difference. If you're into slow motion, the camera on the um, Realme 6, the maximum slow motion is 120 frames per second. On the Redmi Note 9, I believe it goes all the way up to 960 frames per second at 720p, but still, it's a dramatically higher uh, slow motion than the real Mi 6 offers. And uh, yeah, the, the macro camera on the real Mi 6 is two megapixels. On the Xiaomi, the macro camera is, I believe, five or eight megapixels. So I, I looked into the prices here and uh, the Realme 6 comes in, I believe, at 7,000 baht. And I'm sure it's a fine phone. Uh, it's a great phone in every way. So no, uh, no worries if you own one. <laughs> from what I can tell, it's a great phone. But for 1,000 baht more, to go from 7,000 to 8,000, which is the price of the Redmi Note 9, just by jumping up 1,000 baht, you end up getting a huge battery, Gorilla Glass front and back. Um, you get a um, better camera. Uh, what else? All those things that I mentioned that are superior about the Redmi Note 9 Pro compared to the Realme 6. So I don't know why he recommended the Realme 6 when the Note 9 Pro is sitting right there as a comparison. So there is also the Realme Note no, the Realme 7 Pro, and that's a whole different beast. I believe it has a super AMOLED screen, and it has like super, super fast charging, like 65 watt fast charging, which is insane. But beyond that, it doesn't really offer uh, anything else, and it costs significantly more than the Redmi. It costs like 10 or 11,000 baht, so it costs a lot more and all you get for your money is the AMOLED screen and fast charging. And it's funny, when I've gone into um, stores here, a lot of the clerks talk about uh, fast charging as if it is an incredibly amazing feature that everybody wants. But, and I keep telling them that I, I don't care about fast charging. I don't have a fast life. I use my phone all day and then I plug it in and it charges overnight. I never need a phone that you know, recharges in 30 minutes. And I've read that fast charging can damage the battery and shorten its life dramatically. And you're much better off with just a regular old 
standard charging time of, I mean, who can't wait two or three hours for their phone to charge up? I generally have that much time. And of course, if I have two phones, that makes it even easier because I have one plugged in and charging and I'm using the other one, which is fully charged. So the Realme 7 Pro with its fast charging, it's not an advantage for me and it might even be a uh, disadvantage. So, so, for all those reasons, and starting with a budget and making a list of all the phones that fall in that budget, and then deleting all the ones that uh, don't interest me, I'm basically left with the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro. And I'm going to go into Robin <laughs> You might have noticed I've been going around in circles, walking around the parking lot at Robinson, just because I'm not ready to go inside yet. I have so many things I feel like I need to tell you about smartphones, so I haven't even gone inside yet. And I came here largely because I had a good experience with one of the clerks at Banana. It's a local chain store here that sells smartphones and tablets and, and laptops and, and electronic gadgets. I'm sure there's a much better place to go shopping here in Mesot, maybe, but Banana seems like a pretty good option. And as I said, one clerk here that I've run into a couple of times, he was very friendly and very helpful. And I took up a fair amount of his time on my visits, asking him questions and going around the store and talking about different phones. So since I took so much time from one of their employees, I feel like, just to be loyal, when I finally buy the phone, I should go back to the store that gave me such good service. Well, time to head into uh, Robinson. 8,000 baht for the phone. I'll probably end up spending 1,000 baht for a memory card to put in it. So for me, it's a pretty significant purchase. <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm a little bit worried at the same time. Oh, one other thing that uh, makes me laugh is that I've watched so many of these smartphone reviews on YouTube, and I swear 25% of their time and 75% of their energy goes into talking about the back of the phone, how the back of the phone looks. The reviewers go crazy for that. The beautiful colors, the layout of the camera design they either like the design or they hate it they either love the color or they hate it whatever they think the back of the phone is really important to them and it occurred to me that in years and years and years of using my two smartphones i never see the back why would i ever see it it either is in my hand facing me i don't see the back or it's either laying flat on the table or on the desk or on the bed and I don't see the back. And even if I did, I have the back covered up with a cover, a protective cover anyway. So how the back looks is completely irrelevant to me. And yet to these reviewers, they spend a lot of time talking about it. The Poco X3 is a good example because it has a very unique back, this bizarre kind of racing stripe blue thing with a huge Poco logo on it. And a lot of people just despise that. They hate that giant Poco branding on the back and they criticize it a lot. Other people don't seem to mind it. But for me, that would be the absolute last thing I would consider because I don't care what the back of the phone looks like. After I buy the phone, I'll probably forget that it's even there. I'll never see it normally. But having said all that, I think this Redmi Note 9 Pro comes in a couple of different colors. But I think it depends on what country you're in. But when I look online, it comes in some kind of a white, an interstellar gray, and a tropical green. And I kind of like to add color to my life if I can, if I have the chance, hence red shirts. So if they have it, I'll probably choose the tropical green. If they don't have it, I'm not going to worry about it. My next choice would be the interstellar gray. Um, if all they had is the white there, I don't know. I may look, look elsewhere just because white 
practically speaking, just feels like it would just get dirty all the time and cause problems. So I don't really want white, but beyond that, I'll take whatever color they have. At least that's what I say now before I go into the store. All right, let's head into Robinson and uh, do some shopping. I don't know whether I can keep running the camera inside the store. We'll see. Again, I don't know if there's anyone out there like me, but I find when I'm about to make a big purchase, I get a little bit nervous and I don't want to dive right into it. I end up circling the store like a shark in the water circling a uh, surfer. I don't go directly to the store. I kind of visit a few other stores first. I get my thoughts together <laughs> and then I walk around in a big circle and slowly uh, zero in on the store. So I think banana. Is just across the way here. So, 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 